Hi kindergartners, it's me Mrs. Selkamp and I'm back um, to read chapter two of Junie B. Jones is a party animal with you. Chapter two is called Excellent Work of Us. Lucille sits at my same table in room nine. She kept on being mad at me. Remember yesterday in chapter one, it was because um, Lucille's Nana thought Junie B and the other best friend Grace were really funny and Lucille was feeling a little jealous because they were calling her Nana and it was really her grandma that she calls Nana. All right, so she kept on being mad at me, only I didn't even know why. That is a lovely sweater you are wearing today, Lucille, I said, very pleasant. She scooted her chair away from me. I scooted next to her. Ooh, is that sequins I see on the collar? Because sequins are my favorite little shiny roundish beady things, I told her. I touched one of the sequins. Lucille pushed my hand away. I tickled her under her chin very friendly. Coochie coochie coo, I said, real fun. Lucille turned her back to me. I swinged her ponytail. Swingy, 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 I sang. Just then, Lucille sprang out of her chair. Stop touching me, she hollered right in my face. My teacher hurried to my table speedy fast. Her name is Mrs. She has another name too, but I just like Mrs. and that's all. I smiled at her, very cute. Hello, how are you today? Me and Lucille are not even fighting. We are just having a loudest, loudish conversation. Mrs. looked funny at me. I think you mean conversation, Junie B. She said, Converse conservation is when people save something. I tapped on my chin, very thinking. Then all of a sudden, I jumped up real excited. Yeah, only I do, Mrs. I do save something, I said. I saved that Grace a seat on the bus. I shouted across the room, Grace, hey, Grace, tell Mrs. how I save you a seat on the bus. Because she thinks I don't know my words, apparently. That Grace shouted back. She does, teacher. Jenny B saves me a seat on the bus every single day. I smiled very proud. See, Mrs. I told you. I told you I saved something. Mrs. stared at me a real long time. Then she closed her eyes. And she said she needs a vacation. Pretty soon the bell rang for recess. Lucille didn't even wait for me and Grace. She ran right out the door without us. That is how come we had to chase that girl down and surround her. I made my voice very growly. I am at the end of my string with you, madam, I said. How come you keep being mad at us? Because me and Grace didn't even do anything to you. Lucille stamped her foot. Yes, you did. You ruined everything. I was begging my Nana for a little white poodle. And she was almost going to say yes. And then you guys got in my back seat, and now everything is ruined. I did a huffy breath at her. <sighs> yeah, only that is not even our fault, Lucille, because we didn't know you were begging. We just wanted to see your richie nana, that's all. I don't care, said Lucille. You should have stayed away. You guys have your own nanas. Just then, me and that Grace got very glum again. <sighs> I knew. No, we have nanas, Lucille, I said. But they are not richy nanas, like yours. That Grace hanged her head. Our nanas are just regular nanas, she said. They are duds, I said real soft. After that, Lucille acted nicer to us. Sorry, she said. Sorry about your regular nanas. I was just upset about not getting my poodle, that's all. Usually my Nana gives me whatever I want. Just then I smiled real big. Because a great idea popped in my head, that's why. It came right out of thin air. Lucille, hey Lucille, maybe me and Grace can come to your Nana's house. And we can help you beg for a poodle. I danced all around. And here is another great idea. Maybe we can even spend the night, possibly, because me and Grace never even saw a Richie house before. Plus, that way we can beg for your poodle the whole entire evening. All of a sudden, that Grace started dancing all around, too. When can we come? When can we come? She asked. I clapped my hands, very thrilled. 
I'm available on Saturday, I believe, I said. Me too, I'm available on Saturday too, said that Grace. Lucille thought and thought. Hmm, I don't know about Saturday, she said. My mommy and daddy and brother are going away for the weekend, so it's just going to be my Nana and me. I jumped up and down. Hooray, I said, that will work out even better, because now we can bug your Nana with positively no interruptions. Just then, Lucille started to smile. Hey, yeah, why didn't I think of that, she said. I pointed at myself, because I'm the brains of this outfit. That's why I said real happy. After that, all of us skipped around and around, plus me and that Grace did a high five. Because we were on our way to the Nana's, of course. Boys and girls, that is the end of chapter two. The next chapter is chapter three. Let's see, it's only about four pages long, so I'll go ahead and read that right now for today, too. Chapter three is called The Rules. Guess what? Guess what? On Friday, Lucille's Nana called my mother. And she invited me to spend the night with Lucille on Saturday. And Mother didn't even say no. My feet zoomed all around the house when I heard that. I'm spending the night. I'm spending the night. I shouted. I zoomed into my baby brother Ollie's room. Hey, Ollie, I'm spending the night. I'm spending the night. I'm spending the... Just then, Mother run in the door and she swished me right out of there. It was not pleasant. I brushed myself off. Yeah, you sh only you shouldn't actually swish people, I said kind of quiet. Mother raised her voice at me. How many times, Joni B? How many times have I told you to stay out of Ollie's room while he's sleeping, huh? How many? I think for a minute. A million bazillion, I said, but that's just a ballpark figure. Mother glared at me very mad. I rocked back and forth on my feet. A ballpark figure is when you don't actually know the actual number, and so you make up a figure. Because that will get people off your back, I explained. My boyfriend named Ricardo told me that. His father sells insurance, I believe. Mother tapped her angry foot. We are not talking about Ricardo's father, Jimmy B. We are talking about going into Ollie's room while he is sleeping. And besides, I haven't said that you could spend the night at Lucille's. I want to talk it over with your father first. I hugged her leg. Please, mother, please, please. I'll be good. I promise, I promise I... Just then, the front door opened. It was my daddy. He was home from work. I ran to him like a speedy rocket. And then I hugged his leg, too. He couldn't even shake me off. I'll be good, Daddy. I promise, I promise, I promise. All of a sudden, Mother swished me away again. She put me down in the living room. Then she and Daddy did whispering in the hall. And guess what? They said I could go to Lucille's. Yippee, 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 I shouted. After that, I started to zoom some more, but Daddy quick grabbed me by my belt. Yeah, only here's the problem. I'm not actually zooming, I told him. No. Here's the problem, said Daddy. Before you spend the night with Lucille, you have to agree to the rules. I raised up my eyebrows. Rules, I asked. There's rules involved? Lots of rules, said Daddy. And he and Mother bent down next to me, and they told me the rules of spending the night. They are. No running, no jumping, no shouting, no squealing, no hollering, no snooping, no spying. No arguing, no fighting, no cheating at games, no talking back to the Nana. Ah, no breaking other people's toys, no grumping, no crying, no fibbing, no tickling people when they say no. No staying up late and absolutely no headbutting. After I heard the rules, I did a sigh. Oh, yeah, only that doesn't actually leave me much to work with, I said. Mother ruffled my hair. Sorry, kiddo, but that's the deal, she said. Take it or leave it. Take it, I shouted out. I'll take the deal. Then I kissed Mother and Daddy on their cheeks, and I hugged them very tight, and they couldn't shake me off again. All right, that's the end of the second and third chapter. I will be back tomorrow with more. Bye, boys and girls.